Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Keeping Up With MDN. Today I'm joined with a very special guest, Simon Miknovich. Um, Simon, it is an absolute pleasure to have you today. Um, Simon is one of our senior HPC application specialists um, and also an advisor for the HPT, HPC um, team. Simon, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself um, and sort of your passion um, for HPC? Thank you for inviting me along today. Uh, I work at Monash Research. Um, um, it's a unit inside Monash and the objective is to enable and accelerate uh, research discovery at Monash U yep. University through the application of advanced computing, data informatics, tools and infrastructure. It doesn't do research itself but its job is to help researchers use the best in IT to uh, do their research. I personally uh, look after two HPC clusters at uh, Monash, uh, the Monarch Cluster, which stands for Monarch Advanced Research Computer Hybrid. <laughs> um, that's a big mouthful, big mouthful. Uh, but that's a cluster that any Monash researcher can use and access. And it's a, like a little baby compared to Massive M3, which is a much bigger cluster uh, that is used a lot in uh, machine learning, AI, and image processing. There's a lot of GPUs on that cluster. You've used the term um, cluster a lot. Could you describe that to our viewers um, who may not have heard that term before and what that means? Uh, a cluster is a large number of computers linked together with um, high speed uh, interconnection. Uh, yeah. It is one computer itself is not necessarily very big, but there's a, uh, the advantage is the large number of computers all linked together to try and solve your problems. Amazing. And sort of how did you sort of discover your passion? Um, how did your fire sort of like ignite oh, right. your HPC? Uh, well, uh, many years ago I started working for uh, some medical research institutes uh, using computers to help with uh, protein analysis. Uh, and I discovered uh, the advantage of using uh, traditional IT. Um, to help scientists do their work and uh, advance the cause of science moving forward. So it was really interesting to see real things happening as a result of uh, your work. And uh, after that I moved on to Monash where I continued um, using IT to uh, help researchers from all fields to uh, advance their work. Um, obviously you do a lot of um technical and you've obviously done incredible work with our HPC um, team at Monash Deep Neuron. Um, could you tell me a little bit more about how the connection, um, how your connection with MDN sort of works and how that advice you give entails? Okay, okay. Uh, in 2018 Monash E Research sent six students over to the world's largest supercomputer conference where they entered the student cluster competition where they took hardware built a very small cluster of computers and ran scientific software on it. Uh, from there we tried to get back into those contests but it's very competitive. Mm. And, uh, how many, I'm oh, sorry to interrupt you, that how many um, universities were sort of competing? Uh, they have a, a limit, a structural limit of, of 11, oh, no, sorry, 13, uh, 13 uh, teams maximum can enter. So even to get in the contest was a massive uh, achievement for yeah, the team. And that's so great that you've obviously gotten a lot of um, recognition for this achievement. Uh, Yes, uh, so uh, it's a very competitive um, contest, uh, best universities in the world uh, go there. Uh, when COVID came, these contests moved into online modes using um, remote machines and cloud computing and uh, it was a lot easier for us to enter because we don't have to physically transfer students and hardware across to another another continent. Um, we've, uh, Monash has a Deep Neuron team, we, we've joined up with Deep Neuron who, because it was a natural fit, uh, Deep Neuron provide the students and uh, they now even provide training for the students. Uh, we've sort of, I would happy to say we've punched above our weight in them. We, we've won uh, merit awards in several uh, contests uh, and we came second in the um, uh, Indy SCC uh, when um, which is like eventually the virtual equivalent to the first one where you actually physically have hardware there so and have you been to a lot of these competitions before uh, I've only been to one as a supervisor that was the first one yep. and I've been supervisor for the other ones which are, we've done remotely so we had students uh, working and if you go to the Monash Deep Neuron site hopefully you'll see um, evidence of our history of yep. some of the contests we entered. Yeah I think we'll insert like a picture somewhere um, of that but obviously it was incredible efforts made. Uh, yes that's right. Um, the, our most recent uh, contribution we won at Merit Award at the um, Asia Pacific uh, AI contest and two students from the team went to uh, 
a conference in Sydney this year and presented our history of the contest and uh, the things they learned from the contest. And uh, we have some of the uh, awards in front of us today of what they received for, for their contribution to the Very work. Very impressive. Um, obviously incredible, Simon. Another question we would like to ask you is how would you describe, um, obviously HPC is a sort of abbreviation for high power, um, high, high performance. performance computing. Um, how would you sort of describe that to someone who's never heard of it before? Well, uh, computers are now hitting real physical limits and how fast we can make them and how small we can make them. So high performance computing is effectively putting large numbers of computing networks together. So instead of making one very fast, put thousands of computers together, linked together by very fast uh, network uh, interfaces. Uh, so H HPC can cover a range of areas from you know, GPU programming with thousands of cores hitting on one motherboard to uh, traditional HPC which has thousands of discrete compute servers all linked together with optic fibre to even things like quantum computing. Uh, so it, it is a broad range and uh, the, the point of all this is to push science further to uh, solve some of the very difficult questions that uh, can't be solved um, easily. Uh, for example, we can't go to a neutron star and work out what's inside a neutron star, but we can model what we think is happening inside there, or what's happening inside a supernova, or searching for genes that might detect, uh, predict where you have cancer. Uh, these require very large computational models and very large computers to try and solve them. And that's also not mentioning weather and climate. <laughs> it's a very big topic at the moment. Mm. Uh, and many other sort of areas. So, so sort of it branches out to a whole bunch of fields um, that obviously um, need that sort of um, expertise to be able to be predict. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, image processing has become very big because there's more and more machines producing more and more data in the world. Uh, Monash has uh, taken the lead in many of these. We have several cryo-electron microscopes that effectively take a movie of molecules in very low temperature. But even at low temperature, these molecules are bouncing around furiously and they have to de -blur the image to get it. And when they get a good de -blurred image, they can work out the shape of the molecule and its biological importance. Um, that's an example of how um, HPC is used to try and push science forward. In terms of that as well, uh, what field industry, I guess, do you think HPC is going to have the biggest impact? Uh, obviously, you've talked about the supernova um, in the hospitals as well. Mm. Um, would there be any field in particular, you reckon? No, it's being used in a lot of fields. Lot of fields. Uh, there's yep. weather research, computational mathematics, banking and finance, uh, chip design, semiconductor design. Uh, I went to a talk by NVIDIA. They were using um, machine learning and AI techniques to try and design a better heat sink. <laughs> it's quite amazing that uh, ships are being used to design chips. Uh, life science is another massive one. Massive amounts of uh, data need to be analysed, seismic analysis and general science analysis. How um, can beginners or someone who's, I guess, very interested um, but not sure how to start um, sort of look into the HPC? Well, unfortunately, bit. HPC is not taught in undergraduate courses, though yeah. some subjects mm -hmm. like computational chemistry and materials engineering, you do need to use these big computers to do, do your work. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can't go away and, and do a course, uh, but Monash Dick Neuron is, has, to, to its credit, has developed training for its, its uh, uh, students who join. So there are specialised courses and training which we put on. Uh, the Monash has a thing called Data Fluency which enables uh, uh, postgrad students and uh, staff to go on courses that teach them about computing. We run Introduction to HPC courses uh, there and I would also encourage students to just look for opportunities when they arrive and yeah. they will they will see them and it is a, a good career to get into, it's uh, booming, um, yeah, high, high demand for uh, people with those skills. Why did you um, sort of particularly choose this field as well? Uh, well, uh, I basically was a telecommunications research engineer for many years, uh, but um, I eventually uh, had to move on from there uh, and uh, I luckily formed this, uh, found uh, employment in, in the, some medical research institutes helping life sciences and when I realised how uh, useful these tools are and um, I was just happy to keep moving on with it and uh, you know helping the undergraduate students of Deep Neuron is um, also a big buzz too. It's good to see, get another generation.
generation of people walking in. Which you've obviously done an incredible job at. Um, our team's very grateful to have you. Oh, you're welcome. Well, might leave it at that. Thank you so much, Simon, for your okay. time and all the expertise um, that you've given to our viewers. Mm -hmm. um, stay tuned for another episode of Keeping Up With MDN coming out soon.